Hey everybody, it's Brian again, uh, Gibson A9 on YouTube, and I'm back with another installment of uh, my Prague Rock vinyl collection. I haven't posted a video for maybe six months or so. It's been, uh, first of all, the main reason is I've finished the entire collection. Uh, wasn't anything else to show. Uh, but I have done some shopping since then and have some pretty incredible stuff to show. So this is think of this as a another update. Um, there were some record shows this past fall where I picked some things up locally, and I have just returned from three weeks in France, uh, where I got some amazing, amazing vinyl that uh, I've never seen over here uh, from a progressive standpoint. So here we go. Let's take a look at what we got. Uh, it's going to take a while. It's going to be a long video. So. First, I'll, I'll kind of start uh, with the things I got this fall at record shows. Um, some of these are, I'm going to start from uh, the least impressive to the most, but um, this is not even a Vangelis. I thought it was a Vangelis uh, Chariots of Fire album, but it's actually the London Philharmonic playing themes from Vangelis, so that's not quite what I thought it was. Um, Second of all, picked up a copy of this is this is a great uh, this is Walter Carlos Sonic Seasonings. Um, Walter Carlos, of course, being the synthesis who became Wendy Carlos, um, and this is uh, apparently one of his better albums. Uh, gatefold Sonic Seasonings from I don't know what year this would be. Um, 1971, so uh, Moog Synth from 71, courtesy of Walter. Uh, another synthesist here, um, Tomita, Snowflakes Are Dancing, which is one of his better works. Um, I'm not personally so much into the synthesizer only genre with no singing and just kind of, uh, I know some people are, but uh, if I'm going to hear stuff like that, I'd rather hear, you know, an interpretation of classical music or something, but um, this is incredible. So I picked this up at a record show in Greenville. You, those of you who watch my videos know I'm a big Yes fan, so uh, my roommate in college had a copy of this, and I haven't seen one since, so I was delighted to get a copy of the bootleg Yes in the Round. Um, great cover for a bootleg there. It's got the Yes logo. Um, this was, I believe, from their 1977 tour. Um, uh, where they actually played a uh, 1978 live at the LA Forum, October 16, 1978, uh, with the round stage where the, the audience could see them in the round. So uh, delighted to pick up a copy of that. It's my first Yes boot. Um, Focus. There's Mother Focus. Um, Focus had some amazing keyboard work as well, um, courtesy of Thies. Van Leer, this might not be the way to pronounce that, but Mother Focus as well. I picked up uh, Ship of Memories by Focus, which I think I have most of Focus's output at this point. Those were a couple I did not have. Um, the original Yes guitarist who recently passed away, um, rest in peace, Peter Banks. So this is the the two sides of Peter Banks and uh, that's a gatefold as well cool interior on the gatefold there um, he was a pretty amazing guitarist in his own right if you listen to um, uh, the first two Yes albums where he played uh, it's good stuff we've even got John Wetton on here, uh, misspelled John Whetton, um, uh, Tony Banks, Peter Banks not to be confused with Tony Banks, here's The Fugitive, a promo copy of The Fugitive, Tony being the keyboard player from Genesis, and this is his solo effort from 1983. Uh, here's an album if you like original King Crimson, you, this is sort of a must-have, uh, this is uh, McDonald and Giles. And I was lucky to get this at a reasonable price. I've seen some outrageous prices on these, but 
There are two albums that are predate King Crimson. There was The Cheerful Insanity of Giles, Giles, and Fripp from, I think, 68, and this album. This one sounds much closer to what you would hear maybe on the first Crimson album. Um, so looking forward to spinning that. Believe it or not, I never had a copy of the first Rush album from 74. This is a Mercury copy, standard copy in pretty decent shape. Um, seems like these are getting harder to find anymore now that the, the kids have discovered Rush. But um, Okay, that rounds out what we found last fall. Again, with my prog collection, it's getting harder to find... Um, the, the things I don't have are harder to find. So, uh, so that's where my trip to France comes in. So in France, of course, you have uh, French pressings of things. So if, if I find a French pressing of, say, a Yes album that's noteworthy in some way, I might pick it up. But there are a lot of um, Prague albums that had... The, the British cover was different than the U.S. cover. So those are available over there um, and not so much over here. So... Uh, so let's take a look at the LPs I got in France. So this is this album is, uh, um, if you look on Prague Archives, this is Pavlov's Dog, and the Pampered Menial is the name of the album. But um, interesting band. Uh, they uh, the lead singer's got a really different voice. He sounds exactly like Getty Lee, if Getty Lee did a vibrato uh, all the time when he sang. So this guy doesn't just put a vibrato in at the end of a phrase, he does it the entire time. And actually, people either consider it extremely annoying or uh, or not so annoying, but I, jury's out yet. But this is pretty good music right here. Um, you can check it out on YouTube. Uh, picked up yet another copy of In the Court of the Crimson King by King Crimson. This is a... Um, uh, it's an EG repressing, so it says produced by King Crimson for EG Records, so I imagine it's a later one, um, although the the label is, uh, the label says Island, but um, I think it's uh, maybe one of the later repressings. A uh, French progressive band called Ange, or Ange, if you will. Uh, this is Ange's first album called Caricatures, um, from approximately 72. So you know if something came out in 72, it's probably got uh, a pretty good chance of being uh, proggy, if you will. So I'm going to give that a spin. Uh, the next album is, uh, this is sort of a prog classic. Um, I'll give you a little hint. It's on Vertigo. Um, this is Aphrodite's Child, uh, 666. And um, just so you're wondering, this is not a, a satanic album. Um, that trend came later in the 70s with people trying to... heavy metal bands and such, but this album is about the book of Revelation in the Bible, the last book of the Bible, um, which foretells the future. And a uh, um, very interesting take, but who plays on this but... Um, Vangelis Papathanasiou. Papas... Papathanasiou. No wonder he went with one name, Vangelis, right? I mean, who can pronounce that? So, But uh, this was Vangelis and also Demi Rousseau, who was a French singer that later went on to do really horribly cheesy things. But uh, um, this is this is really an excellent album. Um, um, cool gatefold on the inside. Um, Vangelis really doing some cool keyboard work on this, so... Um, uh, it basically goes through the book of Revelation, and if you haven't read that book, uh, you, you need to read it. Um, anyway, Aphrodite's Child. Uh, here's a copy of More, soundtrack from More by Pink Floyd. This is an EMI uh, Columbia copy. Um, Pathé Marconi, so this is a French pressing, uh, original copy of that, which is cool. Um, here's a couple examples of British covers versus U.S. So this is Electric Light Orchestra on the third day. That's the proper original cover for that. As well as the second album from ELO, uh, ELO 2. The little light bulb there flying through space. That's the original British cover. 
and those are uh, French pressings as well. Uh, next is a band that um, was the first band to make famous uh, one Mr. Uh, Rick Vanderlinden, an incredible, incredible keyboardist, but this is his first band, Exception. Um, and this is, a, this is a classic in pop, which was Exception's first album. Um, uh, an interesting blend. It's got a lot of cool keyboard on it. It also has uh, sax, trumpet, and flute. So the, the horn line thing makes it a little different than most prog. But um, pretty good stuff. Excellent keyboard work from, uh, from Rick on that before he went on uh, um, to greatness with focus. So, um, uh, let's see here. Also, uh, and I've been looking for these for a while, so this was great. Camel Mirage on Darum. A Darum pressing of, that's the original cover there. Um, and this is a British pressing, actually, original British pressing. Um, love that album. That's just phenomenal music. As well as Moon Madness. So Camel Moon Madness, the original cover, original pre British pressing of Moon Madness. Um, the albums, the covers for those, um, the U.S. covers were just horribly cheesy. They looked like airbrushed. I mean, the Moon Madness, the U.S. Moon Madness picture is a is a camel wearing a space outfit. It's just it's horrible. So uh, delighted to pick those up. Um, Asia then and now. This uh, um, Asia was the first band that I heard that kind of got me into Prague back in the early '80s when they came out. Uh, discovered who's this John Wetton guy and um, Carl Palmer and you know where did they come from? And but this uh, this was actually right at the era where albums were kind of disappearing, so this is probably, what, 92, something like that. Um, maybe 1990, I think, is when this came out. So I didn't have that, so I picked it up. Um, here's an album I've been looking for for a long time, um, a group called Trace. And once again, Rick Vanderlinden playing keyboards here. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal keyboard-based prog. So I have Trace, Trace's second album called Birds, uh, and this is their original album, uh, just self-titled Trace. So that's on uh, on Phillips. But I was absolutely delighted to get hold of that. Um, speaking of delighted, I have pretty much everything Yes has done, but I did not have this. This is the original uh, cover for the first Yes album, self-titled Yes album. Um, this is actually not an original pressing, so this is the interior. Okay, look at that. Look, a young Mr. Anderson, uh, Mr. Squire over here. Um, but uh, this is actually a 1975 pressing from Atlantic, so it's uh, it's not an original press, but great to get that that uh, original cover. Uh, this is one that I had never seen before. I think this is from. Netherlands maybe, but this is a, look at that, two originals of Yes. So this is the very first uh, first two albums from Yes. That's actually the original cover there, and this is the U.S. cover, but uh, first two albums from Yes in one double LP set. So that was cool. Okay, um, that's it for LPs, however... Um, one cool thing about France is that um, all 45s that were released in France always had picture sleeve covers. So there are some unique picture sleeves uh, available when I go to France. So I'm always looking for Prague 45s, even though I don't technically collect them. So here's a few that I got, and the last one that I'm going to show you is, is the bonus. So uh, you won't believe it. Um, Aphrodite's Child, so this is from an earlier Aphrodite's Child album, so there's a, um, I Want to Live, I don't think this is very proggy, I think it was kind of before, um, here is, uh, Break and Babylon from the, the 666 Revelation album, um, on Vertigo, so that's, that's pretty cool right there, um, 
Uh, I've never seen a copy of uh, a 45 from that album. Um, the Buggles, Video Killed the Radio Star, kind of cheesy, but uh, I have a soft spot in my heart for Trevor Horn and Jeff Downs as The Buggles. Um, it was pop music, but it was, it was pretty good uh, synth pop. Um, Jean-Michel Jarre, or Jarre, Equinox, uh, this is Equinox 4, never seen a single of, from the Equinox album, uh, synthy there. Uh, Jethro Tull, Bure, that's pretty cool, um, on Island, as well as Jethro Tull, Living in the Past. Um, so these, you know, this, this picture cover would have looked different in England or looked different in Germany, but this is sort of the French, uh, French version of that. Uh, okay, getting better, getting on to the last ones here, uh, Picked up a copy of the single for Money from Dark Side of the Moon, which is pretty slick. I haven't, haven't ever seen that. Um, that's on Harvest as well. Um, okay, final three. And this is, uh, this is where it just gets better and better. So um, from Yes's first album, I believe, um, I've seen pictures of this, but never seen it. Picked up a copy of Sweetness, and it was Sweetness to find this, I tell you. Um, sweetness on Atlantic. There's all the all the guys in their glory there in their younger days. Um, as well, the picture sleeve version of Roundabout. So there is Bill Tubbs Bruford with his Tubbs shirt on. Um, love that. It's just a great... Uh, a great pickup there. So two original Yes 45s, and then okay, I about fell over when I saw this, and when I I think I paid eight euro for it, which is about uh, ten or twelve bucks. Um, the guy, one of the record dealers there that I befriended, a fr young French guy, he couldn't believe it. He said it normally sells for twenty or thirty euro, but uh, picture sleeve of. In the Court of the Crimson King by King Crimson. Never seen this in my life. I was uh, online. I had seen a picture of cat food and groon, but I never knew that there was uh, that uh, a 45 of uh, of this single existed. So there were actually two versions that came out in France. This is the later one. You can see it says version original, um, but. The graphics on the cover of this are just cool, or the other one was kind of monochrome looking, but uh, how cool is that? That just... That, that made my day. So, um, proud owner of King Crimson 45. Um, that rounds it out. Uh, it came in under 20 minutes, so I probably won't have another video up for a while unless I find more cool stuff. So, all you prog guys out there, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, Drop me a note on the internet, let me know that you're still out there, and let me know what you think of, uh, of the new haul. So, uh, until next time, I'll see you guys.